I want to share, I'll pull up the screen, Sydney, I'll have you go first, kind of walk us through each of these items whenever you're writing a follow-up email and kind of how you use them. Yeah, absolutely. So I know everyone on this call is probably dealing with a different type of buyer, a different product, a different sales cycle. So there's not a lot of like, here's exactly what you should write step-by-step that I think would be helpful to share. But there's a few things that I really like to keep in mind whenever I'm writing a new follow-up email or maybe I'm tweaking a template that I have. And kind of the way I see this list, and I'll walk through them in just a moment, um, is I think if you have the majority of these and hopefully all of them that you can check off when you look at your follow-up email, there's probably a pretty good chance that it's a decent email and you're going to get a response. Um, At least that's been my experience as I've been experimenting and tweaking with my follow-up. So the first one I want to talk about is making them visually compelling. Um, I think we forget sometimes that our prospects and the people we're selling to are just like us. They can get easily overwhelmed. They have a billion things on their plate. Just imagine if you had a call for something you were curious about buying and they sent you a follow-up email that was just like paragraphs of text. And it's just like, you probably look at that and like, nope, I'm going to put that off till later. Like you want to make it as easy as possible for them to want to see it and take action on it quickly. So that kind of takes me to the second point of making it easy to present to their team. So Mm. dividing the information up in a way where you're not assuming um, that they know all the things you talked about on the call, where you're covering your bases in terms of um, all the different components of the problem that they brought to the table, the things that you mentioned, all of that, because what happens a lot of times after you have a discovery call or a demo call, the person you talk to is going to go to their team and say, you know, or not, like you want to make them want to go to the team. They're going to go to the team (laughs) and say, hey, just had this conversation with Sydney, kind of here's what they're talking about. And you don't want them to have to take the information from your follow-up email and then go make their own presentation or like put it in a different format that they think might work internally. So you can sometimes ask on the call kind of how they generally present that to their team. Um, You can try and get an idea for the information that's most important to them. But kind of keeping that top of mind, I think is super important. Um, Another one is using their words. So if you have a call recorder, that makes it super easy. But when you're kind of recapping the problems that they have and what they thought of the platform and or whatever you talked about in your first call, use their words um, because it will resonate more with them. They'll feel listened to, like it just has a much bigger impact than putting it back into like whatever your marketing team says, right? Like you want them to understand it and feel that emotional connection when they read it. Yes. Um, and then some sort of social proof is great. Like it might be a case study. I think to Tom's point, they probably don't want to read like a full on PDF, but there's like a little snippet of like, oh yeah, you know, Tom is in a similar situation. Here's like this quick little paragraph about how we helped. And I think you can save social proof for future emails too, but just having a little bit of something there can be helpful. And then some sort of mutual action plan. And this doesn't have to be like taking us from now to closing the deal, but maybe there's one or two steps or actions that you agreed upon on the call that they're willing to do, that you're willing to do. You kind of want to test how bought in they are. You want to make sure that they feel engaged in the process. So these could be little things, but if you can highlight a few things that kind of each person in this arrangement committed to doing and kind of keep track of their progress there, I think that's a helpful way for them to be able to walk away from the call and understand exactly what they're supposed to do next um, and the same for you. So I try and think about all these different things. And when I'm crafting the email, um, really include these components to make it as easy as possible for them to walk away from the call, know what they're supposed to be doing, want to present it to the team and not feel overwhelmed by the information you sent their way. 